All right, I am one class. Today we're talking all about slope. So slope is a measure that tells us how steep a line is. All right, the bigger the slope, the steeper the line gets. Um, so uh, let's look at exactly what it is. So uh, the actual definition is the rate of change. And it's real simple. Uh, it's just the change in the y, so the vertical direction, divided by the change in x. More, more commonly referred to as rise over run. All right, so if you look at this example over here, uh, to find slope, what we're gonna be doing today is two ways to find it. One, by looking at a graph and just by counting the points uh, from one point to the next, counting the rise and run, and then two, using a formula, how to, how to graph it. So starting with the points, you can use any two points on the graph. Right here, we're at this point, and you're counting the rise. I'm gonna do a little bit different color. Um, here, so the rise is going down six, all right? And then it goes over two, so the run is two. Rise is six, run is two, you divide it. Uh, since the rise is going down, it's a negative six. So, Negative six over two is negative three, and that's all you do. Uh, let's look at some, uh, or before we do some examples, uh, look at um, the different slopes. Slope can be positive, negative, zero, or undefined. So positive slope is going up from left to right, right? Negative slope is going down from left to right, right? Uh, it's, you'll, make a lot less mistakes when you're counting slope if you think about whether it's positive or negative first. So being able to look at the graph saying, oh, it's going up from left to right, that's positive slope, we're going down, that's a negative slope. You'll make a lot fewer mistakes if you recognize those two things right off the bat. And then there's the zero slope. Uh, it's so flat that it doesn't have a slope. So it's zero or undefined that it's so steep, we don't have a number big enough define how steep that is. It's straight up and down, so it's undefined slope. So positive, negative, zero, or undefined. So let's look at um, a couple of examples from delta mass. So this is what the, uh, the assignment is going to look like um, in delta mass. So first thing you need to do is you're going to draw uh, segments for the rise and the run. So you can take any points any two points on the graph and count the rise and run. Um, I like to see if the, there's a point on the y-axis here. So there's a point here, and I'm gonna do a vertical rise to here, and then the run goes over. So I'm putting in those two segments, and then you just need to count the distance of those segments. So the rise, it goes up one, two, three, four, five, six. The run goes over one, two, so that is six over two. All right, six divided by two, and I'm gonna submit the answer. I know it's gonna be wrong, so it's wrong, all right? You need to make sure you reduce it. So six over two is three, so make sure you reduce it. So let's go over, let's do another problem. Um, find a point here. Uh, what's nice about delta math, it only let you put it, it won't let you do like a half point. So do here, the rise, it looks like up to there, so I'm gonna do, um, segment there and then over to seven. So the rise is, it goes up one, two, and then it has a run of one, two, three, four, five, six. So two over six, that reduces to one over three. There we go. New problem, let's do another one. So here, uh, the rise is starting at five, go down to Next point looks like to three, so I'm gonna go make two segments. So the rise is going down, one, two, three, four, five. Then it goes to the right, one, two, three. So that's, the rise is negative five, so I'm gonna do negative five. Over, just put a slash, and it goes over to the right three. So negative five over three. And that is it. So let's look at the examples I have here. So looking at the rise and the run. So this one, it's going up one, two, three, four, five, and then to the right, one, two, 
So that's up five over two, that's five over two, the answer is A. One more example. Um, gonna, so this is gonna start at three, so it has a rise, it goes down, one, two, three. So it has a rise of negative three, and then it has a run, it goes over one. So that's negative three over one, which reduces to negative three. So that's how you do it by counting. You just count the points um, from top to bottom. Um, and then it also, like I said, it's going, if you can recognize if it's a positive or negative, you'll make less mistakes, especially when you're counting here. Um, but next, the final slope between two, two points, you can use the following formula. So if you're given points, so x1, y1, and x2, y2, you can plug it into this formula here. Um, what you need to remember about the formula. So x1, y1, all right, that, those numbers are gonna be on top of each other in the formula with the y's on top. Then if you look over here, x2, y2, same thing. Those numbers are going to be on top of each other with the y's on top. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, just a little note about the, that two and one. When it's in uh, the bottom corner, so when you have a number in the bottom corner of a variable like that, this is called a subscript. It's a name. It's used to differentiate between multiple x's in the same problem. So usually in formulas, what we're doing here. You can use any, any, any letter, number, symbol, or word, whatever you want can go in there when you're naming the different x's. Typically, it's, it's a number, and it can be confusing at first because normally when we put um, numbers like that, you're going to be doing a mathematical operation. But in this case, it's just a name. Uh, when it's, if it's in the upper corner, we know what that is. That's an exponent. That's a power. We know how that operation works. We've worked with it quite a bit this year. Um, so just make sure you understand if it's a number in the lower corner, it's a name. There's no math involved with it. Upper corner, you're going to have to do a power operation. But today, we're just dealing with the, the name here. So find the slope between the two points. So 5, 3, and 9, 10. So uh, what I'm going to do, um, what I like to do is, so slope, I should notice it, uh, um, we use M to notate slope. What I like to do is put in a line and then the two subtraction lines and then fill in the blanks in the formula. I find that to be a little bit easier. I make fewer mistakes doing that. So it's uh, y2, uh, x2 minus x1. So that would be this point here is gonna go first. And then y2 minus y1 or x, x1, y1 over here, give me this point here. The y's go on top. So easy way to remember that. Slope is rise over run. So when you're counting, it's rise over run. When you're doing the formula, it's y's over x's. Rise and y's rhyme, they both go on top. Rise on top, y's on top. So here, 10 on top, nine on bottom, three on top, five on bottom. And then just do the subtraction, 10 minus three is seven. 9 minus 5 is 4. That doesn't reduce, so the slope is 7 over 4. All right. Next example. We'll do this one. So again, I'll label these points. So this is an X. This is a Y. This is an X. This is a Y. This is X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Put in the long line. Two lines there. So the x2, y2 come first. And then the x1, y1 come next. So y is on top. <clears throat> so yeah, rise on top, y is on top. So three over six, and then two over one. Subtract it. So Three minus two is one. Six minus one is five. 
Let's do another example. Now mixing in some negatives. So I'm gonna get the formula ready. So this is an X, this is a Y, this is an X, this is a Y, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. So again, the Ys, uh, the X2, Y2 come first. So that's gonna go, those two numbers are gonna go in that spot there. Five, maybe two, that's gonna go here. Rise on top, Y's on top. So Y's go on top. So it's gonna be negative four over zero, and then five over negative two. Uh, before you do any subtraction, if there's any positive negatives, plus and negatives, remember plus and negative becomes positive. Or excuse me, minus and negative becomes a positive. So it's gonna be negative four minus five, still on top. And then zero, the minus negative two becomes a plus two. Negative four minus five, uh, that comes out to negative nine. Zero plus two is two. So negative nine halves, we leave it like that. Okay. Next example. So again, this is an X, this is a Y. This is an X, this is a Y, X1, Y1, X2, Y2. X1 or X2, Y2 come first. So that point is gonna get lined up here. X1, Y1 come second. So that point's gonna get lined up here. Rise on top, Y's on top. So two over 10, negative five over 24. Simplify that top, minus the negative five, minus the negative becomes plus. So two minus the negative five is two plus five, and then 10 minus 24. Two plus five is seven. 10 minus 24 is negative 14. You do need to check to see if this reduces. 7 over 14 reduces. You can divide top and bottom by 7. So that comes out to 1 over 2. The negative, you can leave it on the bottom, or you can put it out in front, or you can move it to the top. It doesn't matter. They are all the same thing. Either one of these is an acceptable answer. All right? As long as there's only one negative there, it's an acceptable answer. If there's two negatives, it becomes a positive. All right, last problem here. Um, find the slope between the two points. So it's, uh, again, make the lines. This point's gonna come first. It's gonna get put right in there. This point's next. That's going right in there. Rise on top, Y is on top. So it's gonna be negative six over five, 10 over negative three. So simplify the bottom, since you have the minus the negative three, that's gonna be five plus three. Six minus 10 is negative 16. Five plus three is eight. And then if you divide negative 16 over eight is negative two. And that is it for slope today. Uh, your assignment is in Delta Math, so log in to Delta Math, get that assignment done. If you have any questions, make sure you email me. Uh, other than that, we'll see you next time.